Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and gas time once again. And um, let me go ahead and preface this by saying there is going to be a bunch of moving parts in this. So, I got a fair, excuse me, I got a fair amount of stuff I got to cover. And uh, even then, I might not, uh, there might be a few things that I missed here and there that I might have to pull up. Like, I, or there might be a few things that I might have to pull up on the fly. So I don't, I don't think I'm fully prepared, but we'll, we'll find out as the uh, cast goes on. So let me uh, go ahead and intro this music. This is going to be Sleep Creature Void. Uh, more dark ambient music from Iron Cthulhu Apocalypse. So, so let me go ahead and rewind this back. Here, I'll just, I'll just set it to 100. But anyway, to start with, um, I was uh, posting my Final Fantasy XIV blog on Twitter last night, and apparently Bob Saget died. Uh, he died at 65. Um, it didn't say what he died from. I don't, I don't know, but uh, but I mean, I wasn't a, I wasn't a massive fan of his. I mean, I, I watched some episodes of Full House when I was a kid, or probably when I was a teenager. Um, and I think he went on to do uh went on to do America's Funniest Home Videos, if I'm guessing right. Um, he went on to do that, but, but yeah, he's, I think, uh, I think he also did a podcast with, uh, Joe Rogan, yeah, back when I actually watched that podcast. I think, I think ever since he got bought out by Spotify, it just, his podcast wasn't the same anymore. I, I, nothing I could really put my finger on, but it just, the it factor for lack of a better word, just wasn't there for me anymore. So, but yeah, I think he was on the Joe Rogan podcast. He was on a uh, the Mark something podcast. I'm trying to remember his name. Mark Marin, yeah, the Mark Marin podcast. I heard him on there. He seems like a pretty cool guy, you know. But like like I said, um, I knew about him. I watched him from time to time, but not. Not with any religious fervor or anything like that, but yeah, it still, still kind of sucks that somebody like him dies. So, and I'm, not that I'm trying to get into politics or anything, but you know, it's too bad that somebody like him died and not somebody like Donald Trump, or you know, or any of the, uh, any of the other well-known douchebags that are out there. So, but again, I'm not interested in talking politics right now, so. I don't want to get derailed by that and then um some and then this is probably one of the reasons why there's a fair amount of stuff in my cast this morning uh betty white passed away i totally forgot to mention this in one of my uh early, one of my previous uh casts but yeah she passed away too i mean she's i mean she's been around I mean, she's been around for years and i even you know, even before she was in my all-time favorite TV show, The Golden Girls, I think she's had a long storied career back then too. Um, I I recall seeing an episode of her in uh in the twenty thousand dollar pyramid, the game show with Dick Clark, like back in like the early to mid eighties. And hell, I I remember I remember the episode too. She where she was in it, and uh during like at, shortly after one of the intermissions or one of the commercial breaks. Dick Clark first asked her, so tell us about your new show. Oh, yeah, it, 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 it's a new show, and it's called The Golden Girls, and, I mean, you know, and I'm like, whoa, that's, that's fucking history, man. It's like, it's like trippy and awesome as hell. You know, where you first hear about, a, you first hear about your favorite TV show on a freaking game show, of all places. So that's definitely a moment I'll forget. And it, 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 it should also be stated here that, no, I don't have all seven or eight seasons of theirs. I don't, I mean, hell, I think I've probably watched maybe, maybe about 10 episodes of The Golden Girls. So it was just like all of my other favorites in life. I don't, you know, I don't have 
every one of Frank Zappa's albums, you know, and I don't, I couldn't, I couldn't even tell, I couldn't even tell you the titles of most of them, the titles of the songs. I mean, hell, there's, there's probably albums out there that I don't even know the names of. You know, I could, I could probably tell what it is by the album cover. Yeah, I, I've heard that one, you know, but, you know, but yeah, I'm like that with Golden Girls too. No, I don't. I don't know every episode. I don't don't I don't know every single line or anything like that. But I've seen enough to know that this is my favorite TV show right here. So, and um, and alrighty, uh, I forgot to do something. So let me um, let me fix this real quick. So yeah, um, and I think, I think I also saw Betty White on, um, oh, what's that, what's that show called? I think it's called Match Game. It was a game show back in the 70s. The show was in there too. I think I saw her, seen her in an episode or two of that. Oh, this is, um, I think back when I was actually, uh, visiting my mom every week, um, we would have, like, the game show network, like, you know, on cable. We would have that going. We'd watch, like, all these, uh, all these classic episodes of, like, Newlywed Game, um, Match Game, like, $25,000 Pyramid, all the shows that we used to watch when we were kids. But, yeah, Betty White was in a few of those episodes, too, so... Okay, uh, something went wrong here. Hold on, hold on. Pop this back up. Set up. I set up the wrong hotkeys, so and we just that. So. Ah, uh, but another thing I did last night, totally on a whim too. Just um, just fired up the OBS. So I had to go ahead and record like a like a 15 minute pinball session. Wasn't expecting much. Just you know, just. Expect me to play total ass and all that, and you know, then end up. Uh, I don't, I don't have it with me, but I got a little, a little sound bite. Or in fact, I suppose I could probably pull it up, or maybe not. <laughs> but yeah, I got sometimes when uh, recording a pinball session. If things go really, really bad, pull it down a little bit. But yeah, when when things go really, really bad, I have this little sound bite of me going "fuck," like really loud, and then having this up. Kitaro does. I don't. Kitaro eighty seven, um, a fellow pinball fan like myself, he doesn't like it. But I mean, you know, you know, sometimes you don't know, constantly make mistakes playing pinball. It does get frustrating. You know, sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes I'll put that at the end of the session. I was fully expecting to do that for, uh, I was fully expecting to do this for this session, but like I said, I just, I wanted to do it just to do it, but, uh, but actually, a uh, funny thing happened. I actually did pretty good. I mean, to start with, um, I was just, uh, playing random tables like I usually do. And, uh, first table I got was my all-time favorite table, TX Sector. Um, but, uh, that table there, with the exception of one single time, I'd never do good on. 
It just it is one of the it is a legitimately hard table. So but yeah, like I said, with the exception of one time, every other time I play the table, it's I I don't do well. In fact, uh I have to set it to four players just to stand a chance. Otherwise, I'd be done with that table in less than a minute. So, and then, um, but, um, did pretty good on that. I think, uh, I lasted like 15 minutes just on that table alone. And then, um, the second random table that came up after that was high speed. That's a table that typically I do pretty good on. Um, it's, it's not a, it's not a favorite of mine. Um, but it, it's fairly high up there. Um, I can, um, it's not a, it's also not a very difficult table to play. So, unlike TX Sector, where there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of folding tab A into slot B type, type mechanics on that table. Whereas high speed, it's pretty open, for lack of a better word. I mean, pretty straightforward. But yeah, I lasted about a half an hour on that. I did pretty good. But like I said, I did pretty, um, I think it was like a, like a 45 minute session. Again, originally I was planning on just being like, being on maybe 15 minutes and then being in it at the end of my rope and then, fuck! And, already I'm screwing up, there we go. And then I'm capping out the session with that. So yeah, that was a big surprise. But um, a good chunk of my, a good chunk of the night though, was spent uh, uploading that video. Um, it took probably, I think it was like a, like a four gigabyte video, which means just the uploading alone is gonna take about an hour. Um, all the, the processing and checking for copyright and all that, you're looking at probably another half hour tacked on top of that, so. And for those that haven't seen my other cast, usually when I upload videos to YouTube and Twitch, it, takes a very long time and on top of that I can't really do much else because uploading usually uh, takes up a bunch of my computer's resources so it's almost like I have dial-up but um one thing that I did do one thing I did do though was um, uh, apparently a guy named uh, Pat McNamara or Pat Mac for short I guess he's still putting out content I never knew that um I used to watch his stuff um, but like most of these other uh, people that I know, um, I found out about him through the Joe Rogan podcast. But again, this was back before. This is back before he uh, he got bought out by Spotify. Like he does content on Spotify. So, or to me, when um, when his stuff was actually good, I mean, I'm not gonna say his stuff is absolute piss now. But like I said, it his cast kind of went in a direction I didn't care to follow. So, but anyway, I first found out about Pat Mac on the Joel Rogan podcast, so I checked him out. Um, but yeah, he's still putting out content. I thought he kind of fell off the map for the, kind of fell off the map, fell off the map there for a while. Um, I think, uh, but oh, 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 let me sketch a little history on him. Um, he was, a uh, he was in, uh, I think the Army Special Forces for about 20 years, and then he retired. And then, um, since, um, you know, he's got to keep busy after he retired, I think he uh, started his own, like, tactical firearms training company called T-Max. I think that's what it was. Um, I, either, either the company folded, or he had a fold, he had a, oh, God, how did it go? Here, let me, just... In order for in order for my info to be accurate, let me go ahead and I'll, let me go ahead and pull it up real quick. Okay, here we go. Um Hopefully I don't get an anti-ad blocker ad. That didn't help. Uh, 
Here it is. Yeah, he was um, uh, 22 years in the art. Yeah, 22 years in the army, army special forces. Um. Yeah, he started his own company. Um. T Max. doesn't show anything else but I, I, anyway um either but anyway uh, at some point during this time after he retired I guess he became a drunk like he was basically an alcoholic uh, but so at some point, I think he also had a wife and kid as well. But at some point, he just he kicked it in gear and got turned his life around. I don't remember the exact moment. But uh, so nor so but uh, he was uh he also did a he was also doing video a video series called ba called, <laughs> called basic dude stuff, like he would um he would like something like change an attire. You know, and, and, uh, he would like change a tire. Basic dude stuff. You know, or he, he would like, you would show a video of him changing all a car battery. Basic dude stuff. You know, and well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a drink of some uh, Arizona green tea here real quick. But yeah, he he would. He would ha he would have all these videos of him doing like normal, normal everyday, everyday guy things, and he would always end each he would always end each segment with basic dude stuff. So it, which, which I kind of like, but otherwise I didn't. But yeah, he has a he has a full blown podcast now. Which again I didn't know about this till uh it came up on my uh, YouTube recommendations. So. But um, he's kind of the. That's what I was trying to say. He's he's kind of the exception to the rule. Normally, when I see pe when I see you know big old BP jacked up guys like this, you know, I often dismiss them as a bunch of annoying power trippy steroid freaks, and I want nothing to do with them. Because they're usually the ones most likely to like shove nerds into lockers or stick their heads in toilets and give them swirly, you know, that kind of thing. You know, so, they, I mean, they're just arrogant, power-tripping assholes. You know, I want nothing to do with them. But this guy here is an exception. So, and, um, but, well, you know, maybe, you know, now that I think about it, the, you know, the Joe Rogan podcast was probably popular for, for one of these reasons. You know, he kind of, you know, the kind of people he brings on there, they, like, dispel myths and stuff like that, you know. Because if I had met Pat Mac on the regular street, this is exactly what I would have thought of him. I mean, it might seem like I'm judging a book by its cover, but no, I'm going by past experience. Usually guys that are built like Pat Mac tend to be steroid freaks. You know, they're on the roid, you know, they're on roids, and they're all, they're all mad and in your face, and, you know, and all that stuff. You know, just kind of people I want nothing to do with. So, but yeah, he's full of surprises. That was something else too. Um, he was a cut. He also uh, one of his favorite things to do is bird watching. Like he's he's into the kind of shit that nerds are into, like bird watching. I don't. I can't remember if he said he's into video games or not. Um, I'm trying to think. But yeah, uh, he's got like a he's got like a wide variety of interests. Um, he's, he's an outdoorsman, he hunts, he fishes, he, um, goes four-wheeling, but, uh, again, he also, he also, uh, does bird watching, he plays golf. I think he's also a gamer, too, but I, that, that's unconfirmed, but, like, but, like, like I said, I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but he's one of the, he's one of these few guys that breaks the mold, because, again, most, you know, most guys that are like him are just, you know, arrogant power trippers you know 
I think the world revolves around them. You know, it's like, it's like the reason, the reason they get into the army or the reason they, the reason they work out, it's just so they can chide other people for not. I mean, I kind of have, a, I have a, I have a manager that's like this. He'll, um, he, I mean, at our, at my job, Walmart, we're actually, uh, we're given uh, one hour lunch breaks. He will willingly take only 30 just so he can tell us to do the same. You know, hey, Joe, can you, um, can you take only a 30 minute lunch? Uh, okay, you know, it's, I took 30. I took a 30 minute lunch. You know, that kind of thing. So, but a lot of these, um, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these jacked up people, it, it's like they, it's like the reason why they do this is just so they can talk down to us for not having the same life they do. You know, they're, they do it as an excuse to be an asshole. So, but no, not, not this guy. But, um, no, but he, uh, he got his physique without doing steroids, to my knowledge. But yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, most of what I know about him is from the Joe Rogan podcast. But yeah, he, he doesn't do roids. Um, he actually, I think he said something and they're like, like, I didn't smoke a whole bunch of crack before I came up with this shit. Oh, I actually talked to strength coaches. I talked to fitness trainers, you know, before putting together my own workout plan, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, he put in the work here. He put in the research. So, like, like I said, he's, you know, he's not your typical jacked up dude. So. And then, and also from time to time, I played more Killer Instinct. Um, and then, like usual, just playing a soccer. Um, and I don't have it with me, but... I kind of discovered another reason why I'm kind of into Killer Instinct right now is the music. Not not because the music is enjoyable in and of itself, but it just, at least in my mind, it, exce- it exceeded where Guilty Gear Strive failed. Like, um, a lot of people, a lot of people sing the music, or a lot of people heap high praise on the music of Guilty Gear Strive, whereas, uh, I'm one of the few people that I thought the music was ass. I mean, in, or as far as from a personal per opinion, a good chunk of the music in uh, Guilty Gear Strive, I hear it work. You know, just, you know, and then you hear, you hear, you hear, I got drunk last night, then I threw up on the floor. I had to grab a mop and bucket and clean it up. You know. You know, it just has that, those whiny vocals. Again, I hear a lot of this at work, believe it or not. Maybe not quite so metallic, but, um, but, uh, the band, no doubt. Um, I hear a lot of their music at work. It, it could pass for what you hear on Guilty Gear Strive. Um, I think, uh, the band Sugar Ray. Um, I think some of the music I hear I hear at work could probably pass for the music you hear on Guilty Gear Strive. You know, whereas um the music on Killer Instinct though. I mean like 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 I said, um this kinda I mean Killer Instinct's got to got a fair share of metal music, but unlike the um unlike the music on uh, Guilty Gear Strive, I can actually handle this. Um I know one big reason why is uh I think the majority of it's instrumental. I know, um, and, and to be fair, I've only heard maybe the first three or four tracks of the uh, Killer Instinct soundtrack, and then I think Jago's theme is kind of cheesy. You know, that kind of thing, a little bit on the cheesy side. They're trying to sound like a Mongolian throat singing. You know, but otherwise the rest actually sound pretty cool. I mean, again, there's like, um, there's the majority of what I heard was instrumental. So I didn't have, you know, so I didn't have to, there wasn't any vocals. And I'm hoping that the more, when I, when I listen to more of the soundtrack, 
that they're not going to have the vocals that they have on uh, on Guilty Gear Strive. Because, again, a lot of it, it just, you know, it sounds like stuff I hear at work. Or, and I should also add, too, stuff I hear on mainstream radio as well. Like New Metal, um, Limp Biscuit, that kind of thing. Um, Lincoln Park. Uh, Lincoln Park. Um, saliva. That click, click, pull song. You know, that's, I mean, that's, a, that's, that's what the music on Guilty Gear Strive sounds like to me. Just New Metal. I think that, I think that's the genre I'm looking for. But anyway. But, yeah, and I'm I'm very sorry if I'm uh, getting annoying with the Killer Instinct stuff. Um, I'm like this with a lot of the new stuff that I get into. Uh, when I first got into fighting games, uh, it was Fantasy Strike. I think I talked about it. I, wait a minute, let me, hold on, hold on. Um, no, I don't think I talked about Fantasy Strike because at the time I was playing it, I don't think I was doing cast videos yet. So, but, um... Dragon Ball Fighters, that was another fighting game I'd started playing, but I was talking about it a lot. In fact, uh, most of what I was talking about was uh, when I was watching the uh, season one of Dragon Ball. But you know, I'm, I was like, you know, I was like that with that game. I think I was like that with Footsies as well. My all-time favorite 2D fighter. Um, I talked about it a fair deal. So, but I'm like, like it with um, same way with Killer Instinct now. I guess another way of looking at it, it's just a phase. So, but I'm just, I'm finding, you know, I'm finding a lot of stuff about Killer Instinct I like. So. <coughs> um, but, otherwise, alrighty. Um, well, that's going to do it for me. I pretty much said all the things I wanted to say, and... There wasn't too many horrible mistakes, unlike yesterday. So, actually, I think this is probably a cast video I could probably look back and be proud of. So, but otherwise, hey, uh, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And I should be able to do another one at least tomorrow morning, which will be my last one for the week. So, but until then, though, thanks again for coming by, everybody. And see you all next time. Bye for now.